Paris Rafiq was a member of the UK government task force that investigated extremism. He's joining us on the phone from Manchester. Uh, your initial reaction to this breaking news, what do you make of it? Well, my initial reaction really is uh, shock and horror. And uh, I, mean, I, I can't believe this is a, a city that is right in the heart of Europe, uh, you know, not that far away from London where I work. Uh, and this is a well prepared, coordinated series of attacks. Uh, and I think that it's not something that's just been planned today. It's been planned for a while. But there are, if it is indeed reprisal for, uh, by jihadists in Iraq and Syria, uh, then tactically there may well be reasons uh, for, for carrying them out today uh, regarding the events that have happened over the last 24 hours. What about police and, uh, and, and their efforts underway? Uh, what, what do we expect to see from them? So first of all, to, to uh, containment. Uh, I know that uh, the president has declared uh, France, you know, this is the first time, uh, as, far, as far back as I can remember, since the Algeria crisis, but certainly that uh, France has declared a state of emergency. But the first thing for them is containment. Uh, second thing is safety of the people that are actually in the direct line of fire. Uh, and the third one is to end this, uh, this, this impasse, if you like, this um, uh, the, um, uh, this siege, uh, certainly in the, uh, near the, uh, at the concert hall, as soon as possible, because the longer it drags out, the more the terrorists can actually strike fear into the hearts of the French citizens. Uh, let me ask you this, uh, and, and I want to get your thoughts on this. Uh, the Charlie Hebdo attacks happened uh, back in January, and I suspect some people in Paris are probably saying to themselves, how could it happen again? Um, how could it happen again? Well, the thing is that one of the things that we've been living in Europe, uh, certainly not in the UK, but certainly mainland Europe for, uh, for a long time is denial, and secondly, misdiagnosing what the problem is. For far too long, countries in Europe have been looking at this issue purely through the lens of criminality and, and, and security, uh, and then just focusing on people, once they've been identified, as showing sympathy and support for Islamist terrorism. Now, the reality is, that they haven't done any work in building resilience within our communities. Uh, and that's also the case until recently. I'm on, I'm on the UK government, the Prime Minister's task force, where we're actually uh, looking on how we can actually uh, combat extremism. But really, they need to challenge the ideology. They need to challenge the ideas, the totalitarian fascist views that uh, people will use to indoctrinate youngsters into believing in this cause and make it just as unpopular as racism and fascism. Uh, you know, I, I saw an interview with you back in January after the uh, Charlie Hebdo attacks where you said uh, basically the West is losing the propaganda war. Do you feel like that's still the case? Well, we did a report uh, recently where we actually analyzed the official IS um, uh, propaganda for one month. And one of the things that we realized that was that in that one month, IS produced nearly 1,200 bespoke pieces of uh, propaganda. Now, that's nearly 38 pieces of propaganda every day. Collectively, the coalition is not producing that amount. We need to win this war, and if we don't win this war, we don't get to grips with the fact that we need to tackle, deconstruct the narratives, and then provide alternatives. We're not going to win it.